I want to, I have the idea of starting a new working group for the inner source commons, in addition to the patterns, marketing, uh, learning paths, working groups. This working group would be for those uh, running inner source program offices. So this presentation uh, goes into some of the rationale of why I think that's a good idea and uh, what we might accomplish together and a proposal for how to get started. My goal here is to uh, get feedback on the idea, uh, if it's good, if it's not uh, not good or could be improved, and if it's good to gauge interest, uh, uh, to uh, go ahead and, and start it up together. Uh, if you give me just a second, I'm gonna open the chat window so I have that in view, out of screen uh, view. Okay, so getting started here, just a little background about myself. Uh, my role uh, is, uh, you could say leading the uh, inner source uh, program office at WellSky. WellSky is a technology company that specializes in uh, software for healthcare, for specifically and most particularly healthcare outside of a, a hospital setting. So there's a, a wide range of solutions across the continuum of, of healthcare providers and payers. Uh, so my role is the director of inner source. I set the strategy and execute, help us execute on the strategy. Uh, to make Intersource a regular part of the way that work gets done at WellSky. I was involved in a similar job prior to WellSky at uh, the Nike World Headquarters, and I've been a longtime participant in the Intersource uh, Commons. Uh, so uh, I want to share a lot of pictures to uh, explain you know, where, where I see what folks like me are doing with Intersource, and then from that, talk about how we might work together. Uh, for me, inner source, I think, is like a, a mountain. Uh, everyone is trying to climb uh, Mount Intersource at their company, uh, both in setting inner sources the way things work and also helping other people to make that climb. Uh, I think many people here on this call are advocates for inner source, trying to explain and promote inner source. Uh, uh, and I would like it on this picture it's to drawing attention to this uh, Mount Inner Source and telling everyone that it's a good a good mountain to climb. Uh, individual software teams, individual engineers are made aware of Intersource, and then we want them to practice it, to submit pull requests to, uh, to each other's repos uh, to reuse that. There's benefits. Uh, there's some great views, uh, metaphorical views uh, from the top, but there's also work. Uh, it's a new way of working. It needs to balance out with other things that are happening. So there's some work involved, uh, a little bit akin to a mountain climb. Uh, now, making people aware of their mount inner source and encouraging them to climb it to get the benefits uh, is well and good. But to help with the difficulty, uh, at times we want to do things like uh, uh, maybe provide some tooling, uh, perhaps uh, uh, the tooling to them. So here, uh, a mountaineer might have a, a mountaineer's pick to help them go up mount inner source, and that can make uh, that can enable people. Uh, beyond their current uh, current ability. Uh, in, in the real world, we might uh, teach people uh, how to negotiate or uh, inner source contributions or how to search for code repositories. And I want to liken this idea of enabling individual engineers and teams, uh, kind of increasing their capacity to do inner source. I want to uh, say that this is akin to uh, uh, providing a lot of uh, documentation or training about what people should do. And with that extra documentation or training, those folks are more enabled to climb Mount Intersource and get to the top. So this is one concept that I want to share is that what I'm calling documentation or training, it increases uh, uh, engineers and teams, their capacity to navigate this Intersource terrain, Mount Intersource. And there's some things that we do here in the Intersource Commons that I think is, is at its heart documentation that uh, trains or up levels individuals that can better make this climb. Uh, some examples are our Intersource patterns, the learning path, and also our in person and virtual summits. Uh, uh, none of these change the nature of Intersource, but those involved are more able to ascend uh, to the heights of Intersource where we'd like to see them be. Uh, going back to this picture of Mount Intersource, in order to help people get to the top, there's another aspect or tack that we all can take. Uh, rather than enabling the people involved to be more able to ascend Intersource, 
uh, you could imagine applying pressure and altering the terrain where it's not as steep or difficult. Uh, the folks involved in the climb may have the exact same skill set, the exact same capacity as before, but intersource is made easier than it used to be. And two categories of work that I think have this effect are good tooling and also repeatable process for how, how to do intersource. Uh, tooling might be, uh, uh, for example, an inner source. Okay, uh, uh, we were talking about tooling and process, changing the terrain or changing the slope. So where people or teams with the exact same capacity as before now have an easier time and can also send out inner source. So there may be different words we use, but I think it's important to note there are these two types of things uh, that we can do from an inner source program office perspective. We enable the people to be better at climbing the same terrain, or we make the terrain easier to climb. And realistically, we do both. There's these two categories of work. Some examples of tooling that can help are metrics that show how inner source projects are going and where we can improve. We refer to uh, uh, software, inner source portal, um, uh, graphs and charts that show the degree of collaboration that's, uh, that's happening. And those are activities that I see uh, done also. Now, uh, in providing this tooling, training, and documentation and running an inner source program office, as I'm involved uh, in uh, conversations in the inner source commons, I hear a lot of common problems uh, that we have. How do we get people to contribute? How does this work with Agile? How do I get funding for an inner source effort and promote it and make it aware? And these are uh, these are common challenges that are faced over and over again for anyone wanting to run uh, an inner source, uh, an inner source effort. And I've, uh, because the, uh, the pr these problems are common, some of the solutions look very much like each other. Just in my own listening within the inner source commons, I've heard of multiple examples of companies that have created an inner source portal, for example. There's been uh, a, a few of those. I've heard of at least three of those. Uh, there are a uh, golden deck or a funding pitch explaining to senior level management why inner source is, is important. So these are common things uh, that, that we all have. And uh, a lot of times I hear uh, something akin to this idea that there's no two companies that are uh, the same. Because if, if frankly, it kind of, it's kind of bothered me a little bit to think that there's some duplicative work happening. And, and I hear, well, this makes sense because the situation we have at our company, even though we're experiencing the same problem, the solution is gonna be slightly different. You know, everyone's, everyone's a snowflake, everyone has unique needs. Uh, my view that I want to share with you is that it is true that no two companies are exactly the same. No two situations are exactly the same. Uh, to kind of model this uh, with something visual, you could say, you know, some companies are, are triangles and some are squares. We have some uh, that are yellow, some are large and, and some are small. Uh, you know, some are, are elongated while some are regularly shaped. Uh, so no two uh, are the same and no two shapes on my slide are exactly the same. Uh, but what I wanna focus on and where I think there's an opportunity is that not every company is wholly different either. And each decision that needs to be made, while the sum total of all aspects of a company are different, it may be that the aspects that affect the decision at hand are shared uh, between companies and the solutions uh, can also be shared. In this example of the shapes, uh, suppose uh, each shape needed to know where to slot itself in a rainbow. Uh, every shape is different, but there's commonalities about and equivalence classes about how they can organize themselves in that thing, in that particular decision that needs to be made. Uh, if someone's looking for what size of seat to reserve on a train, uh, there's also sharing that can happen uh, around that, that size. Uh, if these shapes need to buy the right shape of, of clothing for themselves, uh, there's also things that can be shared. Now, no two are exactly the same, but on a decision and decision by basis, when the key points that affect that decision are identified, we do find that there are things uh, that can be shared. And I think it's the same way with, I believe this is the same way with what we're doing with Intersource Mountain. Uh, a piece of documentation affecting a particular problem 
may depend on two or three attributes. No company has all attributes in common, but the two or three attributes that affect that particular piece of documentation to overcome whatever inner source challenge there are, uh, I, there may be multiple companies that share that. And if we identify what are those two or three dimensions and categorize our documentation, tooling, and process in that way, we can create bits of items that are shared. No company will share uh, every bit the same way, but each individual piece can be shareable uh, you know, uh, in that way. So uh, kind of looking overall at the picture, uh, here's a, a, a slide I got from a previous Intersource uh, presentation at one of our summits, just showing folks that are involved with Intersource. Right now, what I see is a lot of these pieces of tooling, training, and documentation are created internal to a company. Uh, my goal is to, for this working group, is to get them out and get them into places that are hosted by the Intersource Commons or linked to by the Intersource Commons. The point is that it's out, uh, out in, in public. And uh, I don't know exactly how to categorize things. They're easily findable. But the first thing that I want to do is, uh, is create a, a system in this working group where every piece of tooling, training, and documentation that's created gets out of individual companies and to a common place. I don't care if it's uh, you know, completely, at first, if it's completely hard-coded, if, if we think that no one else is going to use it, use it. Let's just get it out. Let's get the pile of stuff out that we all are doing. It may not make sense. We may not see how it fits together. But once it gets out, we can start to uh, characterize what are the attributes that make it work in any particular company and generalize it. We can go through that, that sorting uh, and, and see, what, see what we've got. Uh, even if something starts out completely kind of hard-coded to one scenario, maybe the next company that comes along will do some work to, to generalize it. And that's, uh, I think, kind of a, a wish to happen uh, if we just uh, uh, kind of say that that's a goal. The idea of the working group is to provide structure and process uh, so, that, uh, so that work that companies are doing internally actually gets out and actually is characterized and generalized. So just uh, this was linked to in the session description for today, I wrote um, a working group charter for this ISPO working group, Intersource Program Office. And I want to, uh, I think I can actually reshare here and I will uh, flip over the ISPO working group charter. Okay. Um, so uh, I've got here in pull request, I'll probably merge it soon after this presentation, but I have an explanation of how I think a working group can help to achieve the goal of, of, of getting our tooling, training, and documentation out, out in the open. Uh, there's kind of a rationale of, of, of what we're doing here. And then what I want to do is have a, a regular uh, weekly meeting of those participating in the working group. And we are going to track uh, items on a, a Kanban or a project board. Uh, I've got here uh, five um, kind of phases that I think our work moves through as we, we start with challenges inside our company and eventually end up with something shareable that can be shared cross, cross company. Uh, we'll have some things that, that those in the working group have identified as a challenge. This is a challenge that I need to overcome now. Uh, individually or as a group, we can come up with a proposal of how to meet that challenge. And then the most common thing that I see happen is for the company that had that challenge to implement the proposed solution internally. Um, I, I think, you know, sometimes, sometimes there's this idea like, oh, you know, don't build anything in, internal, just, you know, work, work externally. That's how we all work together. The reality is it, it takes, it takes a little longer um, uh, to work externally. Uh, so I, I see internal work happening all the time. And I want to acknowledge that by saying that that's a step on the way to external. But after you know, some challenge has been solved internally, the next step uh, in participating in the working group is to, is to put that in an external location. Uh, it may feel horribly hard-coded or, oh, this is only going to be useful to us. Again, I don't, I don't care. Let's, let's put it all external. The next person can improve on it. You know, as you saw in the graphic earlier, you know, we'll, we'll sort out the shapes uh, uh, later, right? Um, uh, and then after it's put out externally, part of the goal of the working group is to uh, 
uh, to work so that more than one company can use that same solution. Uh, maybe what's put external actually didn't end up being useful for another company as is, or maybe some modifications were needed to generalize it. That's part of the working group as well. And I've got here just this review. Uh, we can have a, a, in the working group a board here uh, with uh, every challenge moving through these phases of a proposed solution, a solution implemented internally, uh, sharing that solution externally, and then having more than one uh, company use it. I think there's some overlap here with other working groups. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the InterSource Patterns Working Group where there are, are patterns that are, are shared and then validated cross company. I think a lot of the way that this external column might be implemented is in, in our working group, sending contributions to other working groups. The value I hear see, see here is making sure that, uh, you know, really this, this internal to external column uh, by putting uh, solutions that we know are implemented only internal to a company on this board, and having a regular uh, working session to come and review it, we continually remind ourselves to not let these things stay within our, our companies, uh, but to, to move them ex external. And this, this kind of, the, this first half, I guess these, who hey, have a challenge, I need a proposed solution and to implement it internally. Uh, I think this first half is largely done ad hoc in the inner source commons and to where it's not visible and we forget to, uh, to take those internal things and put them external. So I, I think this working group will, will help to organize that, that aspect. Uh, so there's more detail here in the pull request of, of the goals of the working group of how it'll work, but a regular meeting and a, a project board probably resulting in contributions to other working groups is the overall structure uh, that I see. Uh, let me go ahead and sum it up and then we'll have uh, time for our discussion. Uh, I'm gonna, Try my luck and uh, come back here to uh, to my presentation slide. That should be coming up in just a second here. Okay, I'm back to the presentation. Oh yeah, we are just about at the end here. I created a Slack channel ISPO working group for those that are interested. You can find it in the InterSource Commons Slack.